Today I will be doing a scentbird haul. Just gonna do some quick first impressions. First one is almost single. I picked this because, well, I mean, yes, the name is fun, but also because I really liked some of the notes. I believe it has a T note, and I'm a fan of T notes. Put this a little bit off to the side. Oh, okay. There's no T. Okay, never mind. There was something about the scent when I read off. I know I was super excited about it. Okay, anyways, today is just spritz and say. Mm. Okay, there it goes. Mm. Okay. The first thing that comes to mind when I smell this is a very attractive man. Whew. <laughs> this reminds me of a scent someone I dated used to wear. It does have an aromatic aspect to it, possibly from the rosemary. I can't get past... I really can't get past the... The memory. Oh, okay. Wow. That is unfortunate. It's a, I'm a bro in undergrad kind of scent to me. And again, it might just be a note that I am associating. It might not be the whole entire scent, but whatever it is, I'm picking it up. Next, we have Lise Rosestruck. I really enjoy bow by this brand and i enjoy their bottle aesthetic it's very clean and fresh all right so rose struck oh sorry not rose struck why did i say rose struck oh crud i just sprayed rose struck on ethereal whip so there's two lease fragrances and that's what happens when you don't pay attention uh ha, ha, ha. well now we know that it is rose struck in my head as i was ordering it I did think to myself, gee whiz, you likely don't need another rose fragrance, no matter who it's made by. But then, I convinced myself to get it. <laughs> There's something about completion of all the scents in a, in a house. It's that collector urge, that need for completion. <laughs> it is a fresh scent it is very rose focused i don't have much more to say because i cannot get past how strong the rose is maybe it will settle down next will be sana yardin revolution de la fleur okay i like this this is a very sweet flower a very pretty sweet flower i believe what i'm smelling is tuberose However, it's interesting and not indolic at all. There is a little bit of a solar note. There's a little bit of vanilla that I'm picking up. It smells like a tropical floral bouquet. Definitely giving tropical. Just a wisp of a sunscreen note. Coconutty solar sweet floral. I'm not disappointed. The notes are listed as rose, frangipani, jasmine, vanilla, and sandalwood. I'm wondering where that sunscreen smell is coming from. Be maybe it's the... Ye oh, see. Uh, yang, yang. These cards are useful, but I would appreciate, you know, more notes, less whatever this part is. Ingredients. Wait, what? Huh. Pause, because this was not in the cards. It wasn't... This was not included in the cards, and the way I wrote these strips out anyways. Let's move on to the next one. Latin Lover by Carner Barcelona. This is nice. It's leaning feminine for me. There's a floral aspect to it. There's a little bit of sweetness, something like a peach or an apricot. I think it's very strong. Wow. That's 
actually hitting me really hard right now. I think that this would look smell wonderful on someone who is maybe just a decade older than I am, and I'm in my 30s. I mean, I'm not in love with it. Let's be frank. Oh, interesting. Good old Liang Liang. Is that why? Is that a note that bothers me? Or maybe it's the violet. Because I do like Magnolia and Jasmine and Lily of the Valley. But, I mean, obviously, Semper doesn't list all of them. It's funny. Every fragrance is addictive. Like, <laughs> a used adjective. Probably not for me. Maybe in the future, one day. Who knows? Noses change. Noses change. Next, next, we have... House of Bow Infinitude. I purchased this because I liked the name. I need to do a little bit of self-reflection. I also bought it because, you know, I wanted to see how House of Bow did oud because they typically have such fresh, light, breezy scents. And I was curious to see how they translated oud into their fragrance profile. Oh wait, it's really good. Hmm. Okay, I'm enjoying this. Mmm. Maybe there's incense or aldehydes in here. It's a bright, clean feel. Mm, this is a beautiful scent. It's a little bit more complicated than I expected. It's heavy and light at the same time. I am interested to see how this wears and evolves. Mm, I also picked this one because of incense and myrrh, probably. Cedar. I tend to also really enjoy cedar. Kind of peppery, kind of sharp wood smell. Mm. That's a pretty darn good one. As I, how many cards do I have left? I only have three cards. Next, we have Rag and Bone Bergamot. I really enjoy Amber from this line. Oh my goodness. I'm so surprised. I was expecting it to be much more citrus. But even on the opening, I mean, there's definitely citrus there, don't get me wrong. But it, there's, it is a smooth citrus, balanced by the woods. The citrus is wrapped up in the wood, enveloped in the wood, if you will. I really enjoy the opening. This says, okay, cedar, cashmere wood, pedigree, orange blossom, Croix de la Femme is next. I don't hate it. It's not bad. Hmm. It's okay. I don't hate it. I wouldn't mind smelling it on someone else. But it's not speaking to me. Okay, Roja Elixir. Um, yeah, I don't have a sprayer card for this one. I'll have to go and make that real quick. Let's just do Ethereal Wave first. Hmm. This is nice. Can you tell my voice? It's a little disappointed. I think I was expecting it to blow my socks off like Bo did. And just because a house smashes it for one fragrance for you does not mean that it will do it again and again for every fragrance. That is so strange. That's another reason why I bought it. Not just for the completion, but I really like tea scents. But the bergamot is just too, too strong at this. Maybe when it dries down, it gets better. If I don't like the opening, I'm so sorry. It's not going to work out. So it turns out there were actually two fragrances that were in this set without the cards. I like. It is a fruity floral with a little bit of vanilla, but it is crisp and clean. It is crisp. Let's not use the word clean because then people start thinking soapy. It is crisp, light, maybe some kind of apple thing going on, and a little bit of vanilla. Beautiful, feminine, girly, scream spring. And then Hot Couture is not bad. I did not dislike it on first sniff. It didn't make me mad. 
family as Dama Bianca. Definitely not as sweet as Dama Bianca. Doesn't have that Keen's opening. All right, so let's go through these real quick. Almost single. Okay, on second sniff, after a little dry down, it's not as obnoxious or loud. I still don't know if I would trust this guy who wears it, but he might be up to something shady. Yeah, almost single. <laughs> Next, uh, was it Revolution de la Fleur? Why not? It doesn't super matter. More tuberose coming in. I just don't like tuberose. I don't know what I was thinking. I'd, I would laugh if I found out that there wasn't any tuberose in here. Was there tuberose? Of course, I don't remember. It doesn't say that there's... Oh, it's the yang yang. Also, there was a floral note that turned me off, and it was probably the yang yang. Although, it's fun to say. Next, let's see where Lots and Lovers at. Yeah, it's nice, but I'm not obsessed with it. I don't love it. So let's burn them up. Mm. I like this one. The woodiness is coming through. And I do love my cedar. Next, let's do Rose Strip. Oh, goodness. Interesting. It's as though the rose literally opened and blossomed. Huh. Can a rose be indolic? Wow. That is a fascinating transformation. Oh. Is that why? Is it the two different roses? Oh, how? You know. I don't hate it. The greenness coming through now. Not the matcha tea greenness. The cassis more? Wow. The layers. I'm... I'm happy with this. Let's do infinitude. It is a transparent oud, if such a thing can exist. The oud has been smoothed over and caressed by the murin incense. There's nothing animalic about it. It's transparent and light. I think the myrrh and incense are taking over and basically keeping the oud at bay, kind of. Okay, I really like that one. Next, let's do Prada Le Femme. This one got a little bit more fun on second sniff. Hmm. It smells familiar. Hmm. It smells... Very familiar. Something I smelled in the 90s. Hmm. Next, Ethereal Wave. It's a fresh light green. Yeah, that bergamot is still... I'm surprised at how long. Is it a grapefruit in here? I'm definitely picking up a little bit of a bitter grapefruit. Cardamom doesn't seem strong to me here. Right? I don't mind it. Uh, hot Couture. Stable, as it was. I like Rojo Elixir. It's in the same family as Sonic Flower by Room 1015. This is more sweeter than Sonic Flower, and the flower is more present, a little bit more dense. In Sonic Flower, it just floats, a thin little wisp that you catch, a little floral wisp that flits in and out. Am I picking up hazelnut? Hmm. I don't know, because I don't have a card. All right, did that one. And rose struck, we were struck by the rose as it evolved. I believe that is all of them. Um... So those are my first impressions. I look forward to revisiting them. I think that's probably my favorite thing, is seeing how your perceptions change. That is to say that you can disagree with your future self uh, or with your past self. And that is okay and a very human thing. Opinions are opinions. 
they are certainly subject, if not required, to change. If your opinions don't ever change, are you growing? So that concludes this Scentbird haul.